And now for our dinosaur of the day, Barsbolia, which was a request from Brecht via Facebook, so thank you. The type species is Barsbolia sisinski. It's a large hadrosaurid dinosaur that lived in the Cretaceous and was found in Mongolia in the Nemect Formation. The name means of Barsbold, and Barsboldia was named after a famous Mongolian paleontologist, Dr. Rinchen Barsbold. Teresa Marianska and Halska Osmolska named Barsboldia in 1981 based on a partial skeleton with nine back vertebrae, nine hip vertebrae, 15 tail vertebrae, a partial pelvis, and some ribs. Marianska and Osmolska said Barsboldia was a lambiosaurine, a hollow crested hadrosaur, which was the first from the Nemect formation, though they didn't find a skull. But it does have lambiosaurine features, such as a sacrum with a keel along the bottom and bones that look similar to Hippocrosaurus. However, since there's only a partial skeleton and no skull, some scientists consider it a dubious genus, and a 2011 study suggested it was actually a sauroliphene. The study was by Albert Prieto Marquez, called A Reappraisal of Barsboldia Sosinski Dinosauria Hadrosauridae from the late Cretaceous of Mongolia, and it was published in the Journal of Paleontology. It makes sense if it's a sauroliphene instead, because by the time that Barsboldia lived, sauroliphenes had mostly replaced lambiosaurines. So if it was a sauroliphene, Barsboldia would have had a small, solid bone crest, or maybe even no bone crest on its head. Though some studies of Edmontosaurus, a relative, have found that some sauroliphenes did have soft tissue crests. They're very rarely preserved, though. Hmm. Barsboldia had tall neural spines, especially the ones over the hips. The tips in the first few tail vertebrae were club-shaped, possibly because of old age. And our listener, Brett, who requested this dinosaur, said that he has a hypothesis about Barsboldia, so I'll just read it to you. Quote, it had large spines, just like Acrocanthosaurus. Maybe inside this tall spines there were fat reserves saved to survive the deserts of Mongolia, just like camels today, end quote. And it could be. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit with Spinosaurus, the idea that maybe it was like a big hump Mm -hmm. that was used that way. Yeah, and then kind of look at Spinosaurus a bit differently. but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Since Barsboldi is a hadrosaur, it was both bipedal and quadrupedal, and it would have eaten plants with lots of continually replaced teeth. It's not clear, though, how large it was. Other dinosaurs that lived at the same time and place included Sauroliphus, a hadrosaur, Tarchia, an ankylosaur, Nemetosaurus, a titanosaur, and predators such as Allioramus and Tarbosaurus, which were tyrannosaurs. There's two subfamilies of hadrosaurids. There's lambiosaurines, that have the hollow crests, and sauroliphenes with the solid crests. Pre-2010, most hadrosaurines were classified as sauroliphenes, and we talk about that more in episode 31, Corythosaurus. Before, the group was known as hadrosaurinae, hadrosaurs that for the most part didn't have crests, but then the genus hadrosaurus was found to be more primitive, so the subfamily was renamed sauroliphenae. Very cool. Hadrosaurs, also known as the cows of the Cretaceous, yep. are <laughs> rarely talked about, even though they're so abundant, and a lot of them are really cool. And probably pretty important to their ecosystem. Oh, for sure. I really liked the description that Scott Persons gave about some of the hadrosaurs, and you kind of wonder, like, how did these exist, and what niche were they in? Because they were too slow to outrun things, and they weren't big enough to kind of fend them off, and they didn't have a lot of weaponry, so they're a very interesting group. But they might have herded or something, or been just fast enough to kind of outpace them in long distance. Yeah, there's power in numbers. Yep. 